Merry Christmas Eve to all of us who are gathered here. Um, if you are here in church, um, I see extended pews of family, kids home from college, families here from town, and it's just so wonderful to be together. A uh, special welcome if you are visiting today, and for all of those who are online, we have been through um, a bumpy couple days with the weather, and glad um, if you are here that you are safe and sound, and trust that you are the same if you are online. Uh, we gather here on um, this eve before Jesus' birth to hear the story once again from Luke's Gospel, one that we have probably heard before. And God is always up to something new, and so we trust that God's Spirit is in this place, coming to you in your life uh, with that message that you need to hear, forming us as a community into the world, uh, that God cannot stay away, that comes into this world, and each of us is offered that gift of presence in our lives as we make our way as well. Everything that you will need tonight is in your bulletin. If you are online, it's on the screen as well. We will be lighting candles at the end of the service. If you don't have one already, you can find a time to sneak away and get one, and we will give you instructions. And we will also be partaking in Holy Communion. And just know tonight, wherever you are in your faith journey, there is a place at God's table for you. So we begin with our Nativity hymn as we light all four candles and the Christ candle tonight to celebrate Jesus' birth. this holy night to hear the mystery and marvel of how you come into this world. Come, Lord Jesus. Come into the lives of the poor, bringing hope, into the lives of the powerful, bringing caution, into the lives of the weary, bring rest, into the lives of the wise, bringing restlessness and into our lives and longings, wherever our place. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. The light shines, the angels proclaim, the shepherds hear and go, a mother ponders, God's promise is born. God's promise is news of great joy for all people. Amen. Amen. 
Please rise in body or in spirit for our processional hymn. together, God in flesh, your love breaks through heaven on this holy night. Gather together this fragmented world and embrace each heart in hope. May all of creation sing of this comfort and joy. Christ is born. Amen. Good afternoon. The gospel today is from the book of Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus to all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, 
Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Now I welcome all the kids to come up for the children's sermon as we sing Away in the Manger. How are hey, you doing? Rich and cold. How are you? Yeah, I'm a little cold too. It seems to be coming down with a lot of snow right now. I know. Who knew it could get this cold in 1 AD in Bethlehem? But right. here we are. Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just came out to check how much snow had fallen. Now that's like the middle of the night, but it is really bright out here. Why is it so bright? I was just going to say, it might have something to do with that really bright star right now. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's weird. That's weird. Also weird are those shepherds and sheep going into Mary and Joe's barn? What is up with that? Yeah. That seems a little strange. A little Why would bit. they be going into Mary and Joe's barn? Huh. I don't know. Huh. Maybe they're having a little bit of a, like a petting zoo? Could be a, a petting pet zoo. I wouldn't want to clean up after a petting zoo, though. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. Did, do I hear a baby crying? I, yeah. I, I do hear a baby crying. I hear a baby yeah. crying. Wow. <laughs> oh, oh, right. Mary was pregnant. That's right. So maybe. Right. maybe Mary and Joe had their baby. Yeah. Oh. Okay. 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 So maybe they're having a party or something. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. There's people bringing gifts, it looks like. I see three people with some gifts, so maybe it's a baby shower. That must be what it is, a baby shower. A baby shower, yes. Uh, did I just see frankincense and myrrh going in there? Yeah, that is not the gifts I would bring no, to a baby no. shower. We just did this with Sunny, <laughs> and let me tell you, bibs and rattles and diapers, really helpful. I bet, no frankincense yeah. and myrrh, though. Ooh. Nothing. Weird. But, oh, look, there's like people wearing white robes and halos and wings it must be a costume party sort of baby shower it could be That's it could be a costume party combo. oh look someone's coming hey drummer boy yo hey um you just came out of mary and joe's barn can you tell us what's going on oh, there? we are celebrating let me tell you it is the birth of jesus the messiah you know he's born today right promised messiah the chosen one bringing salvation for the whole world 
Mary and, and Joe's baby, baby was the Messiah? Messiah? Yeah, Whoa. I know, right? I know. Well, you know, so the shepherds, the wise men, the angels were all, were all coming to greet him and, you know, meet this baby. You know, I even brought my drum, as you could maybe hear, but Mary said it was a little too loud for the party. <laughs> but I think you should go. Go and check it out. We totally should. That's a great idea. We'll bring diapers. Yes, yeah, so probably we'll better diapers. than myrrh. Probably better than Frank Sinatra, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay, we should all go. Yeah. But first, why don't we pray together? Dear Lord, thank you for being born, and thank you for your love. Amen. 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 We have little gifts for you before you head back to your seats, so see Pacer Eye before you go back to your families. Thank you. God's grace and peace on this most holy night be with you all. Amen. The poet writes, Later that night, I held an atlas in my lap, ran my fingers across the whole world and whispered, Where does it hurt? It answered, Everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. I'm thinking about Joseph this year. He might be the character in this birth story we know the least about. We have to piece together Joseph's story by reading Matthew's gospel because Luke doesn't write much about him. We only know that he was engaged to Mary and Joseph was from the house of David, the family tree of Israel's greatest king. But it doesn't sound like a kingly lineage kept Joseph from hurt. Early on in the engagement, he was told that Mary was pregnant by another. The life as he imagined beginning with her now changed Joseph had to internally process the shock and disappointment with this news, being so secretive and scandalous. Luke never mentions that an angel came to assure him that he was part of God's plan. In this gospel, Joseph holds this all on his own. Mary left for three months to visit her cousin Elizabeth to be comforted as the baby grew. But we don't hear of support for Joseph. He probably kept working, keeping focus and occupied while he waited and questioned. 
And then amid the uncertainty of this marriage, the Roman government ordered the people to register in their birth city, to be counted, to be taxed. And so Joseph and Mary go. Joseph is held responsible for this journey to take on a story he wasn't writing. And even in his hometown, his family was not able to welcome them in. Joseph's unsettledness joins all that Mary is carrying. The unfinished pieces thrown together, waiting to understand how this could possibly unfold into a life that mattered to God. And then while in Bethlehem, Mary's water broke. In the middle of all that wasn't quite right, God comes in a mysterious entry that no one was ready for, somehow weaving Joseph and Mary's separate experiences together now, con connecting them to write this birth story that is still told tonight. The first visitors are not people Mary and Joseph had met before, Wayward shepherds show up proclaiming that angels came from heaven to find them in the fields, to sing of the joy that God had come, calling them to see for themselves that this promise was real. These shepherds who Mary and Joseph probably will never see again were the witnesses to this birth and God's news of great joy. God calls unlikely people to go, to leave the regular routine, to be a part of God's wide horizon, dawning a new day that would forever change the world, adding them to the mix to offer what they had as another piece in this unfolding story. On Wednesday nights here at church at Mount Olivet, as kids and adults come up for communion, we invite them to write their prayers on whiteboards. And then at the end of the service, we read what has been written, and we pray for all the names and the needs that are mentioned. So much of the writing is from kids. They just know what hurts who needs tending and love, and they write about it. Recently, it was the death of a beloved kindergarten teacher's husband. For friends who are sick, for people who are hungry and unhoused, for grandparents who have died, for all the people in Ukraine. Maybe even more than adults, kids trust that God will be found in the hurting places, and as they grow in their faith, they will learn that Jesus, God in flesh, was born to people who were still figuring things out in a place so different from what they expected, and that they will meet people who will come into their lives to bring comfort as they witness to God's love. Kids trust that people will pray the prayers that they have written down and that God will hear them and in the mysterious mix of divine and human bring all the forces available to offer love, to bring hope and healing to the hurt. You see, God is not done creating, even in the messiness of circumstances, so much so that God in flesh enters to experience this bumpy and ever-changing life with us. This is the Christmas story. And in this humble delivery room, did you notice the first act of love to the newly born Savior? God who con could concoct an entrance any way that God would like, is received with a swaddle, a tight wrap, an embrace nurtured skin to skin. The first interaction of divine with human 
is tender, loving care. And that is the sign the shepherds are told to look for a babe swaddled lying in a manger. That is God's presence made known. Maybe that can be a sign for us too. When we doubt and struggle with our life and our faith, when we're longing for a purpose or a plan or a place, look for the moments of tender, loving care, because that's where you will find God. And when you can't seem to find it, offer it yourself. Be open to the places and people God is calling you to meet. I connected with a former colleague of my dad who at the time was a mother to four teenagers and young adults in addition to being a high school counselor who guided these emerging adults in all the challenges, joys, and decisions in their life. I asked her, what is your secret? How do you do what you do? And her response, just love them. As the poet writes, hurt is everywhere, yes, but love isn't far behind. Showing up in unlikely places, offered from person to person, kind act by kind act, Jesus is born for every hurting place and comes to remind us that that is also where God will be found. And maybe that is why all of Jesus' life was about coming close to people on the edges, proclaiming that blessing would be found for the weeping, the poor, the peacemakers, the hungry, the persecuted. And amazingly, God empowers us to both care and be cared for, extending this swaddling love each day to wrap this fragile world. If your life is unsettled these days, if the life you are living is not the story you expected, if you are holding something tenderly, if you are wondering where this life is taking you, you're in good company. This is the place where the Savior is born, and on this night, God comes into this weary world, connecting people who have never met, along with earth and sky together, in proclaiming the story of how the divine is so enfolded into this world. Wherever you are, you are a part of this story. No part is too small. This will be the sign, lives wrapped in love. The poet writes, the atlas of the world is held in God's lap, but God can't stay there. A savior is born. God comes into this imperfect world and into your heart. Let it be so. Amen.
during this offering time, we offer our gifts to support the mission and vision we have here at Mount Olivet. You can also give online via Venmo this year by scanning the code in your bulletin. Kids, the offerings you place in the basket up front go to feed hungry people in the world.
we pray together over our offering. God of peace, your birth among us is good news of great joy for all people. Turn our hearts toward each other so that we might love our neighbors and share what we have with all those in need. Amen. What peace of love is offered here? What banquet come from heaven? What food of everlasting life? What gracious gift is given? This is, is Christ the King. the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams and for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, you come to us in bread and wine with love and forgiveness with mercy and compassion connecting us to one another and to you. Send your spirit on us in this meal that we may behold your presence and be held in your love. We pray now as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is always place at this table for you. You, too, are part of God's unfolding story. So open your hands now and simply receive, for Jesus is born today for you. If you are online and having communion at home, hear these words, the body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. For those of you here in person, ushers will guide you forward with the reminder that wafers are gluten-free, the wine in the cups is dark in color and juice is light. You are also welcome to use the kneelers to pray. Come now, for all has been prepared. Thank you. 
Stand there. 
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We pray together, humble God, you came into this world as a child in a manger, and you come to us again in ordinary bread and wine. Send us from this table with joy in our hearts, ready to live the good news that you are with us in all things. Amen. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ coming into the world, we pray for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. After each petition, I will say, God of heavenly peace, and invite you to say, hear our prayer. This day of your birth, O oh God, dawns with new hope for all living things. For starfish that glow in the deep sea and stars that light up the night sky. For snow-capped mountains and snow-draped evergreens. For the red panda and the red-tailed hawk. For the oceans and the air, for plants and the soil, that they might pulse again with life. Inspire us, O oh God, to renew our relationship with your creation and to care for the earth and all its resources. God of heavenly peace. Bring peace into this world, O oh God, and an end to armed conflict and violence. Raise up leaders in every community and nation who will honor human rights for all people. Give us courageous voices to speak out against oppression and to advocate for the powerless in all the spaces where we live and work and play. And send us out as messengers of the hope that has come to all people. God of heavenly peace, hear our prayer. Bless all who worship on this holy day. Be present at our tables. Breathe reconciliation into our families and watch over those who travel. Sustain community organizations that give to people in need, including Mount Olivet Community Partners. God of heavenly peace. Lead those who are in desperate circumstances to safety, shelter, care, and viable employment. Grant rest to those who are weary, companionship to those who are lonely, and comfort those who are grieving. We give thanks this day for the saints of every time and place who have gone before us. May this cloud of faithful witness, witnesses bless and strengthen us until that day when all are gathered together in the promise of life with you forever. God of heavenly peace. Amen. Through the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we entrust all for whom we pray into the tender mercies of God. Amen. We are so very happy to be worshiping together and for your presence here tonight. And um, I have a few little updates to send you on your way and then some instruction for our candle lighting. First of all, I was so excited to do the welcome because it's kind of our own version of pentatonics over here. Um, and thank you for the beautiful uh, music tonight, um, all our favorites. 
Um, if you're interested in coming back tomorrow at 10, I think you'll hear a couple more. Um, but I wanted to um, alert you to an insert in your bulletin, and that is um, Mona Olivet's vision is one of being open, um, opening our grounds, which we have done. And um, several, a few years ago, uh, we updated our kitchen to commercial kitchen to be able to partner with Loaves and Fishes and Open Tables to serve a weekly community meal. And in a, just a few short weeks, we will hit 20,000 meals since December of uh, 2019. And we are embarking on our third phase of that called Open Doors, um, which seems te technical in nature, but that is to pay off our mortgage. We received an amazing generous gift from a Mount Olivet family and paired that with COVID relief funds. And we, as of today, are $91,000 short to paying off our $1.1 million mortgage, which is not just a technical payoff, but a futuristic sense of where we are being called to share this tender, loving care and a need into a world that has so many hurts. And so the future of Mount Olivet is literally in our hands. And if you haven't heard about this, I invite you uh, to talk about that in your family and how you are able to contribute to make this amazing next step for us as a church. There's information on that insert. Uh, we're hoping to pay that off by March 31st of 2023. And uh, can't wait to be sitting here with you next year and telling you where we are because of the work that God is calling us to do. So thank you so much. Uh, may your night with your family or your extended friends um, remind you of God's love that has been born for you tonight. And here are some instructions as we make our way. This amazing group of vocalists is going to sing O Holy Night. And if you are at the end of the pew, you will receive a light. And if you could remember to turn to the person next to you and take the unlit candle and light that on the lit candle. And as O Holy Night finishes, we will sing together Silent Night with that last verse being sung a cappella. So I invite you as you are able to please stand as we close in our song. <clears throat> Ooh. 
great joy, God's peace descending upon you, God's hope rising around you, and God's love dwelling within you. Be blessed by the God who was born into this world for you, Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace, Christ is born. Thanks Thanks be to God. Thank you. 